Welcome everyone. This will be a new type of video. This will be a product review or kind of a promotion because I got this uh, device from Banggood and I got this for testing. Uh, this is the KSGER uh, T12 soldering station. This is the 3.1S uh, version of uh, the device. And uh, I got the device itself with the three soldering uh, tips. One with a wedge shaped tip, one with a very pointy tip, and another has this kind of knife type of uh, tip. So three tips, and then I got the handle, and uh, that's all. So I will need a power cable for this, but that's not a problem because uh, I, I have it. So what I will do, I will uh, check this product, and I will check uh, how it works. And of course I did a kind of a homework so I checked on the internet what's up with this thing but I haven't really read uh, for example the documentation of this thing so I will also test by this how intuitive it is to use it but uh, I checked that there are two potential flaws in this uh, which might uh, be good to fi be fixed so this video will be also sort of a guidance uh, about how to fix that if my version has uh, that kind of uh, flaws. So before using this thing, I would like to uh, check inside this uh, device and uh, see what is inside, how it works and uh, what can be potentially learned uh, from the inside of this device. So let's open this thing and there is nothing else, just uh, these uh, Philips uh, screws. So I will just open them. Uh, hopefully without uh, damaging the uh, screws. So this is the inside and uh, I just hold it here so we can look at it without me touching anything. So this is how it looks when it is opened for the very first time by the user. So yeah, the microcontroller is right there and it's a STM32F103R8T6. So it's almost like the blue pill uh, microcontroller. It has a slightly different hardware, but, but basically it's the cheap version of the, or cheaper version of the blue pill. And as we know, there is a chip shortage uh, nowadays, at least when I'm making this video. And uh, therefore it's very difficult to get those blue pill chips. And uh, this is, one of the alternatives which has uh, roughly the same function and uh, computational power but uh, it's a bit easier to obtain it and then here is the connection for the display so that will be our OLED display uh, we see this cable going to the top of the uh, transformer here and uh, it has a coin shape so I suppose that that is for the battery which supplies a real-time clock and then uh, the other pair of cables here is just the power, which uh, powers yeah, basically the brain. So the microcontroller and the rest of the things. So that, that we know. And then of course, this is the high voltage part. So this has a uh, bridge rectifier somewhere, I suppose. Uh, and then uh, we have the uh, mains uh, transformer. And uh, then yeah, basically that's all what we can uh, see right here. And to see those things which I saw in other uh, videos, I need to go deeper. So I just unscrew uh, these other screws. So this is the control panel, we can call it like that. And there is a buzzer here. And yeah, as we said, uh, this is the STM32 uh, microcontroller. Here are the connections uh, for the uh, soldering uh, iron. And then some other stuff, uh, probably to drive everything for the, uh, to drive the STM32 as well as the display. So that's what we have here. And then on the other side, we can just slide this thing out. And now we stop here for a moment before touching anything because I don't know when was the last time when this was turned on 
and this capacitor is suspiciously close uh, to the live voltage uh, and if I look at its rating it's 400 volts so let's discharge that uh, thing before yeah, killing myself so I need to find a multimeter and then uh, measure if, it, if there is any charge left in that uh, capacitor so if we remember then it's these two pins here and let's see okay it's uh, discharged so we are kind of safe and uh, there is nothing in that so I can see and yeah I haven't emphasized but uh, this thing uh, works with a live voltage so uh, just do everything for your own uh, safety or keep your own safety in mind and uh, do at your own risk so what we can see is that there are gaps here in the PCB and that obviously is to separate the high voltage part from the low voltage part. So those are kind of safety features. And then uh, what you can see is that there is a track here which goes to the front of the panel. And that is basically just the ground as far as I could uh, see it. Because we can see the N and L, neutral and live, uh, uh, tracks traces and they go totally the opposite so the ground goes here and then we can actually see that it goes to this uh, capacitor and to this uh, inductor uh, right here so nothing uh, extraordinary there we have uh, this MBRF 2200 CTG chip uh, honestly I don't know what this is so I will put the description of this chip down here on the video because yeah, I haven't uh, checked this and I don't know it from my head and then on the other side we have another chip here FQP 20N60C I will also write uh, the uh, designation of this chip down here and uh, then what else we should see here so this circuit is the V205 version and I checked uh, the other videos which I found on the internet and they worked with an earlier version however I can see the same problem here if I'm not wrong that uh, this chip is uh, still has that issue with the trace that uh, one of its traces is running under this uh, heatsink so what can possibly happen is that you can short out uh, the heatsink with that trace if something goes very wrong and then yeah your wall device is destroyed so one solution could be that uh, we can lift up this uh, heatsink uh, but that seems to be a little bit meticulous task right now so I will not do that but uh, that that can be something or we can just run some uh, captain tape under this uh, heatsink to separate uh, the surface of this track from the surface of the heatsink so that, that, that can be done probably more easily so I will do what I can do but uh, disordering these pins and stuff like that that might be a bit too big of a task and I don't really want to destroy this circuit and then another thing is that uh, the housing is anodized that's one thing but it's not grounded and uh, if things go very wrong uh, that can be an issue so one thing that we can do is that we can uh, add grounding to the house and since this thing is anodized it's not enough to just yeah poke uh, a hole through it and uh, then uh, yeah screw a, a bolt in it but actually the anodization has to be uh, ground away so what I will do is that I will put a screw or bolt somewhere here and uh, then I will also scrub away this uh, anodization and then I will also make sure that uh, there is a galvanic contact between these threads plus uh, the bolts and screws so all the parts of the uh, housing will be uh, grounded and for that uh, I should also take away some of the anodization from the holes here because uh, everything is like perfectly anodized so we will do that uh, right now 
So here is our hole. And uh, then I will just uh, try to uh, get rid of this anodization. So let's see how that works. I think we need a tool for this. So I tried to get rid of the uh, metal, but uh, still we might have the problem that uh, these bolts uh, still have the anodization. So we will see uh, after doing the continuity test how it uh, behaves. But first of all, I would like to add uh, this bolt and uh, screw just to see if it fits the hole. Yep. So I'm uh, going to take a few pictures of this. So when you go to my website, you can see this in more details. So then I'm going to use this kind of uh, thingy to connect uh, the wire uh, for the ground to the casing. And I have a wire prepared, which is really thick. So I just bought this uh, yeah, several months ago from the local hardware store uh, and uh, it is used for high voltage things. So it should be sufficient. So now we have a solid connection uh, between the back panel here and uh, the earth connection there. Uh, so then we can uh, assemble the housing, the enclosure and uh, see if the earth goes through everything. So we will do some continuity test and first of all I just check if uh, the earth is connected to the earth of the connector that is connected and we are on the housing as well so I can detect this as well as this and now if I just uh, poke my probe here on the earth and I just uh, probe the uh, ground uh, holes for the bolts there is a connection. But then what I should see is that if I probe the earth here and try to see the threaded part here is if there is any connection. And there is, which means that the uh, galvanic connection is now established uh, between uh, the earth, so the ground, and uh, let's say the other side of the panel. So you can hear it. So that's fine because now we are safe. So I just put the other side on uh, just to see if uh, that is also now grounded and that should work easily so let's check the ground again so continuity is on and now we have to touch yes 
So now I'm touching one of the revealed holes, which I ground away, and it's connected. And also I touch uh, the connector for the soldering iron, and it's connected. And of course they are not connected to neutral or live at all. So I put these things back. So I damaged the, uh, the anodization on purpose on the top of this uh, housing. I made a small scratch and you can hear that uh, there is a connection between this uh, bolt here and the top of the casing. So everything is grounded now. That's very nice. So now I made this guy semi safe, let's say. I'm still a bit concerned about the gap between the heat sink and the trace on the panel but uh, that will be maybe another video where I try to fix that. But now we have this done, so I just clean up my place and now we will focus on the soldering part of this and what is the capabilities of this uh, device. So let's check that after I cleaned up. So now let's test uh, this uh, soldering station and uh, let's uh, see what are the capabilities of this thing. So what I want to do, I want to discover the menu structure of this thing and then uh, I would like to test uh, the soldering capabilities. And I have uh, three different kind of tips for this uh, device, but I inserted this, uh, let's say, knife-shaped thing. I think I can uh, check the type of it and I can tell you which one is this. This is the T12K type, uh, probably it's not visible on the display due to the lack of the focus of the camera, but uh, I could read it and tell it to you. So this is the T12-K uh, uh, thing. And then I have a T12-D24. This is the wedge uh, shaped. And then I have this very pointy guy, and this is the T12-ILS uh, tip. So now I'm not using them at this moment. I'm just using this uh, D. Uh, or sorry, K uh, type. And then uh, this uh, already destroyed SZBK07 circuit will be my test subject for soldering, desoldering, whatever. And I will also try the calibration because actually you can calibrate uh, the thermometer of this thing. And uh, what I will do, I use my more or less reliable K type thermocouple, attach uh, the thermocouple to the end of this and yeah just calibrate it so if I turn on this thing then it starts to beep and then uh, it will uh, go up to different temperatures and now I have already set up the tip and uh, let's uh, see how we can select the tip because actually uh, these tips have their IDs uh, for a reason, not just because you can buy different kind of things and you can select them at the checkout. But what you can do is that, uh, of course, you can select the tip. So you push down this button, the rotor encoder, and turn it to right, so clockwise direction, and you see that we have this tip select menu, and now it is at K. But of course, if I keep rotating this thing, then uh, I can go through the available tips. And uh, I have my other ILS uh, tip, which is this uh, pointy guy here, this one. And I can also select the D24, which is this uh, wedge-shaped uh, thingy. But since we have the K type, I just go to the K type and press enter. And now if I press this and go counterclockwise left, this is the tip calibration menu. So this is another important stuff which we can do. And what we can do is that start, that starts the calibration, recover, that uh, resets the factory settings and exit. So then we exit. So what I'm doing now, I just uh, set up a relatively safe uh, environment here by using this uh, stand here and uh, try to do some kind of uh, 
mechanical connection between the tip of this uh, soldering iron and the end of my thermometers. So let's see if I succeed. So I would say that now we have a reasonable mechanical contact. I just don't really want to destroy this K-type thermocouple, but uh, what I can do or could do, uh, add a little bit of solder uh, just to enhance the connection. Maybe I, sh I can do that uh, just for the name of science. I can sacrifice this. So now we are exactly at 300 degrees or yeah, almost exactly as you can see, 302. So let's start the calibration and uh, let's see what we can do. So I enter this menu and now this thing should go to the set temperature, which is 428. I hope it's visible on the display. So we are heating up this thing and uh, after waiting for enough time, uh, we have to see where this thing settles down. And that uh, is like the real temperature, which we can adjust. So once we think that the temperature settled down, then uh, we will enter the temperature here on the display by rotating the knob here. So we can see that uh, now this is sort of settled. So it says that that is 420 something, but uh, the real temperature is 360 something. So I just go there. And then I press this. So now the temperature changed to 328. So this uh, will of course follow it. So now the power is less. So we wait a little bit. Meanwhile, I check the mechanical connection, but that's still solid. So it says that we should be able to read 328, but uh, we are dropping down below that. So 316 now, and we seem to be almost there. So it starts to settle. You can see that the cooling curve, if you imagine the cooling curve of this, it's getting to the flat uh, region because the speed or the rate of the temperature change is getting lower and lower. So uh, we can see this clearly. So let's uh, say that 312 or something like that. Uh, we could wait for an eternity, but or 13. And now the temperature should drop down to 228. So we wait for that now. And what is happening here is that, uh, yeah, you imagine an X, Y coordinate system, and then uh, you have the real temperature and the measured uh, temperature, and you put the three dots down, X, Y coordinates, and then you will have a fitting on this by, for example, least square fitting. And by having these three measured temperatures and the least square fitting, for example, uh, you get the coefficient for the uh, calibration. And then uh, basically the, the soldering station will save these coefficients itself, in itself, and then uh, use it to provide the proper temperature to the uh, soldering iron. At least that's how I imagine how it works or how I would do this kind of calibration. Uh, once again, I just check the mechanical connection here. We are still pretty good. So now it says 228 and this is 226.5. So 227, I would say. And now we are good. So now uh, the device will try to return to 320. Now that's the operating temperature. So we should see uh, where it goes. And yeah, seems like it goes there. Of course, uh, yeah, this is a PID controlled thing. I haven't touched the PID parameters. Uh, so there, there is some overshoot always. Mm, so that's fine. But uh, four degrees, uh, I'm really happy with that, I think. So, so far this uh, looks very good. So now I change the temperature to something funny. I don't know. Uh, let's make it 250 one so i put the set temperature to 251 and now let's wait for this and see if it follows it
Okay, so here we can see something very funny because, in fact, uh, the internal thermometer is showing 251 now or 252, but uh, actually the real temperature here is just 200. So it seems like that the calibration is still not okay. And I check and uh, the connection here is fine. So something is wrong here, but seems like it's only the bottom uh, of the temperature uh, region because if I go to uh, 340 now, that's the target temperature, I believe that that should be relatively correct. And since I will be working with this thing at this kind of temperature range, I'm more or less concerned about these temperatures uh, and whether they are correct or not. So here, this guy says 400 and, uh, uh, sorry, this guy says 340 and this guy says 346. That's pretty much fine. So that's how we calibrate. So once again, uh, if you press the knob, keep it pressed and turn it right or clockwise, then you can select the different kind of uh, tips that you are using. If you turn it, uh, counterclockwise or uh, left while uh, keeping the knob pushed then you enter the calibration menu and you can calibrate your tip by using an external thermometer and I know there are better hardware for this but uh, this is what I have so this is what I use the principles are the same so now we have this hot iron here and I just try to see if I can, for example, sweep off uh, the SMD components easily. And yes, very easily. So that's nice because, uh, yeah, desoldering, for example, SMD components will be very simple with this. Yeah, they just fly off. So yeah, it, it, it works well in this kind of things. But what I would like to see is that you can see that we have these more sturdy, uh, bigger connections, which are actually connected to this uh, induct inductivity or inductance coil. Uh, so we should see if this is mounted easily or not. And I just add the small blob of uh, tin to this edge to help it, to help to spread the, the heat. And I can see that it's molten. Now, now it's, this is molten pretty much, so it's bubbling and everything. So uh, let's say six seconds or less. And if I just check the other, I can see it started to, and it's molten now. Uh, yeah, it's crazy, crazy powerful. Yeah, th this is really uh, stuck there, so I cannot really uh, remove it easily, but uh, I can try to pry off some other components, which might be easier to, to remove. There you go, LED is off. So now I have a new LED. Uh, and yeah, this, this edge, uh, this is why it's very good, or this kind of uh, knife because it's wide enough and thick enough to cover both legs of a component. So that means that uh, you can very easily desolder components with this because you can simultaneously heat their legs. And uh, with that, you can just uh, yeah, remove them easily. I will try one, but uh, I'm a bit clumsy now. So this might not be the best. Uh, best attempt. I need a bit more soldering. Yep. So the problem is that uh, this is in a very confined space. <laughs> it's very hard to remove. Maybe if I just let it fall out, if it falls out. It does not. But I can feel that both legs are uh, removed. I just cannot uh, pry this off uh, from here because, yeah, it's stuck. So, yeah, the performance of this thing is very good, I can say. 
uh, another safety test. So now, of course, this is uh, grounded. That's very nice. You, you can see th this thing is very, very flexible. I can put a knot on it very easily. But we should see if it burns or not. So 340 degrees still. I just recently soldered uh, the, the legs of this thing here. And you can see I can do whatever I want. So cheers. This is very good. Uh, I, I'm happy about this because yeah, I, I just don't burn it at all. So you can see it's a very, very good uh, cable. It's not only that it's uh, extremely flexible, so it will not go in the way. You can move it anywhere where you want, but it's not flammable and it will not uh, melt because uh, some cheaper uh, soldering stations don't have this option. So yeah, while this thing looks a bit, uh, I don't know, not the best because for example, here it's ugly, but uh, that, that should be our least problem that it's ugly. And uh, this cable looks a bit, uh, I don't know, unstable, but the main wire is silicon and yeah, I can do this. I will not damage the cables at all. And st still you can see we are at uh, four, uh, 340. So it's very good. And uh, now we can see what else we have in the menu. So if I enter the menu by pressing the button, of course we can uh, just uh, change the temperature. But if I press this thing long, then I enter the real menu and uh, there I can adjust the PID. I can adjust, uh, yeah, I just show you. So these are the PID values, but I don't touch them. I, I, I don't really want to mess it up. Then we have the standby. So you just uh, set up the standby related uh, things here. So how you should wake it up so you can shake this uh, soldering iron and you can wake it up from the standby. And this is, uh, I guess, the standby time and this is the standby temperature. So yeah, I'm satisfied with these values so I don't touch them. Uh, and yeah, 10 minutes is needed for the sleep mode. And uh, I have no idea what this is, but we can see, yeah, it's just auto or manual. I guess how you can go there. And we have a boost uh, option as well. And uh, code end. Mm, I have no idea what this is, but uh, you can always check the manual. And tip, this is just which tips are in the list, which uh, we used to select the different tips. Uh, coder um, A, B, A, B, I don't know what's that. Uh, password, not really necessary. Screen saver, not necessary uh, to check. Uh, buzzer, yeah, you can turn it on and off, I guess. Uh, it buzzes when it reaches the temperature and so on. Uh, some people might find it uh, annoying. Voltage, switch on off. Uh, I have to check what this is. I will write it down. Uh, low wall P. Uh, I don't know what this is. I haven't checked this. Power on. Standbys. Yeah, I guess this is what uh, the device should do after you turn it on. So yeah, I guess we keep it on standby. We have the disorder, inching, valve. Mm, I don't know those options. Pump set. Uh, I don't see any pumps in this, so I don't know what's the purpose. Uh, display, yeah, two displays. I guess th this is just the style. Uh, we will see it. Language, we keep it in English, but I guess it has a lot of stuff. Yeah, uh, something Zhongwen. So I guess this is the Chinese, uh, Russian, English. Yeah, okay, so you can choose from Chinese uh, Russian and English. Uh, date and time, I have already set that up. System info. So as I said, uh, I'm using the 3.1s version. And yeah, this is what we have. Uh, reset. Uh, yeah, that's self-explanatory and exit as well. Yeah, and this is the other type of the display. So 
32, that's the ambient temperature. We have the current time, 10%, I guess the utilization. So yeah, the power utilization. Uh, K star, mm, I don't know what that is. If I move this, nothing happens. Uh, yeah, I try to solder and uh, see if, if something changes on the display. Yeah, the percent value goes up, of course, because now we are drawing power uh, because we are soldering. Uh, hopefully you can see it uh, mm, on the display. I will try to go over a big blob and see. Yeah, that, that seems to be the power draw. I can see that uh, the number goes up as I melt more and more uh, solder on the board. So I guess that that is somehow related to the power. So that's that's nice. And now we went back to zero. So yeah, this looks quite decent. Uh, soldering iron. Uh, of course, I have to use this for for a while uh, to get a bit more better overview of this, but. So far what I saw in this uh, one hour testing, uh, I should say that this is a very nice soldering iron. It's, uh, it has a very good handle, I, I like that. Uh, yeah, it looks a bit, uh, I don't know, uh, not the best quality I would say, but uh, it perfectly serves uh, the purpose. It has a good uh, balance, I would say. It's nice to hold it. Uh, the length is not too bad. Uh, I can show my TS100 as a comparison it's not much uh, shorter and then my issue with the ts100 is that this has an oval shaped uh, body and sometimes it just feels a bit uh, clumsy uh, a bit i don't know not so easy to hold but this has of course a circular shape and uh, since it has this kind of uh, change in the diameter here it's really good to uh, support it with your middle finger and with your uh, index finger so then it's almost like holding a pen, despite the fact that we have a reasonable long distance between the, let's say, the fingers which support and uh, the edge of the of the very top of this uh, blade or soldering tip. But uh, yeah, it, it's very nice. And once again, the cables are really good. So I really like that because, uh, for example, for my TS100 at this moment, uh, I'm using an external power supply which has a very rigid cable so sometimes it's very annoying to solder with it but this will be very easy to use so that's very nice yeah display even yeah of course you cannot see it from this camera right now but uh, despite the fact that I'm looking at it at a very uh, large angle I can see the display because it's an OLED display so I can really easily read it but uh, it's not necessary once I set up the values so the display is large enough and readable. Yeah, this uh, rotary encoder is easy to change. Maybe now now I'm using gloves, but uh, and it feels a little bit slippery, but it's it's not a big deal. But maybe the rotary encoder could have been made of a bit more, I don't know, rough uh, knob, but it's fine. And despite those things which I uh, discussed regarding the missing earth from the housing and uh, that trace which goes under the heatsink, I don't see any other problems. And as far as I could see, other people are having the same opinion. So that's really nice. So all in all, this is a very nice uh, soldering station, especially if you consider its price. It's a very cheap uh, soldering station for the performance especially if you consider that you get extra uh, tips with it. The only thing that you have to keep in mind that you don't get the power cable, or at least I did not get it, so you, you should buy your power cable uh, to, to be able to use it right away. And uh, basically that's all. So this would be the conclusion of this uh, device. It's a very nice device. It heats up very fast, keeps the heat uh, very well and it, uh, it is very easy to handle it and very easy to work with it. Uh, it's nice for desoldering due to this very good construction of the soldering tip. And uh, basically that's all. So I'm very satisfied with this product and I can just only recommend this. So this will be my 
everyday uh, tool for soldering because it's uh, very good to use and uh, very easy to use. So check the link in the description if you want to buy this uh, same product. It's uh, provided by Banggood and uh, you should check it. And also if you want some extra pictures and extra resources regarding this device, go to my website. Link is also in the description. So I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.